Sangi Tamji get to Tagi Chutan, to Palin Savo Lama Roboje, Tagi Chur Primitive Jane, Codin Jimbo Connages on the Kuzum to Jim Mudu Sato, so Tapke to the Shaki Jis Tung, Shinjim to Tuji Punjumba. Sergi Lumbo Tabruji Bibo, Shaji Jabisha, La Chatsa, Chat, Kuluji, Jagaton, Chenton, Kavasan, Sanget, Tala Kandu Talate, then Batumba Jeris, La Chatsa. Sejitjo, <coughs> Sejatanjizib <laughs> Chopped Please generate proper motivation. <clears throat> For the sake of the liberation of all sentient beings, we must achieve complete enlightenment. This is a this is a vow that you have taken, each one of you, willingly. What does it say about us if we make such a big promise and um, and then let it go to neglect? As always, please remember, think about Shakyamuni Buddha seated under the Bodhi tree on a seat made of kusha grass, serene, straight, honest, fearless. Mm compassionate and his gaze is fixed upon you. Only thing Buddha is looking for is our enlightenment. There's no other agenda. There's never been such a there's never in this world and beyond there's no one who seeks such a thing 
other than um, the Buddha. Even our parents, they may wish the best for us, but their capacity is limited, um, their wisdom is limited, and so um, the influence, the impact is very limited. Only a completely enlightened being that is beyond the reach of impermanence, time, can truly can truly strive for our enlightenment. I mean, look at our teachers. If we believe, if we really believe that they are enlightened, that they, they have no conceptual wisdom, what are they doing? What is the point of their seeming ordinary? What is the point of them walking, speaking, having opinions seemingly. What is the point of all that? So, please bring to your mind this completely enlightened Buddha, this being that whose sole motivation was to liberate us, is to liberate us. Um, you can close your eyes, you can open your eyes, leave your eyes open. The objective is to just think about the Buddha. Probably there's never been such an easy meditation where in the Lojong text, in a very, very high Lojong text, mind training text, they, they use um, we, we are taught that just as we use a boat in a ship to go beyond a water body, the ocean or a lake or what have you. Maitreya says it's actually quite unthinkable when you really think about it. He's, this is what Maitreya said. He said, take a, take a tiny stone, a pebble and throw it into a river or a water body, it will sink. Yet, if you are skillful enough, but this is really from Madhya. He said hundreds and thousands of kilos worth of metal will float. So in the Lojong tradition, there is such a thing called using the <coughs> self-grasping, using the ego as the boat. To go beyond samsara. Another analogy is Mm. Mm. In India, there is a certain type of poisonous plant that grow that is eaten by peacocks. They love this plant, this fruit. Now, if an ordinary bird will eat this fruit, they die. It's poisonous. But somehow, for peacocks, it's medicinal. It's their food, and it is what gives them their color, sort of speaking. They just become so vibrant. More of this plant, this poisonous plant, it really helps them. Such is the myth. I do not know. Maybe so. So similarly, for 
ordinary practitioners signs physical form um, devotion these things almost poison like because they will take it to extreme and they like they like ideas such as emptiness it's very attractive but for a for a bodhisattva for a bodhisattva like this yes form of a buddha simple serene form of a buddha is the highest form of meditation and is the highest form of bhakti devotion without shakti money we have nothing all the tradition you can think of all the great masters that came you know Padmasambhava, Shantideva, Nagarjuna, your own Buddha Guru, none of this would exist. Like a clean paper, just nothing. This is important to know. That's why we revere Buddha. Something Padmasambhava said, to give credit where it is due, this is really the root of tendril, you know, tendril causes and condition. That's what tendril means, cause, cause and effect. It's the root of this kind of um, meritorious, um, enlightening cause and effect. So try to sit straight. And think about this Indian prince, this runaway prince, mm. with his right hand touching the ground, his left hand meditation posture, just serenely sitting under the Bodhi tree, his gaze fixed upon you, with a faint smile. Look at that. If you have too much thought, good. All meditation. No thought, great. All meditation. Don't worry. Please. Now. Okay, that's what I really want to do. Now let's go into the sutras. Fabiola and Fabiola's cat. <laughs> So 
Sutra is very simple. Mm, questions on Maitreya. Simple yet so profound. I think I will give the oral transmission first. I don't have a lot to say today. Um, so I will try to keep it short. But of course, when if you have question and answers, I suppose it's time because this is the last session of the Sutra Project 2. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So first, the oral transmission. As you know, what it means is that um, during the time of Buddha, there was no writing. Nobody, nobody, they didn't write things down. They didn't need it to. Just, it was just so transparent. Do you know that when people became monks, there was no rules. There was no rules. Think about that. There were no rules. No such thing. Well, he did say this. Do not accumulate. Do not engage in negative karma. Give up prison sovereigns, accumulate um, virtuous karma. Let's say that. Rangi Semi Yongzudu, now most important, tame your own mind. That is the teaching, this is the teaching of the Buddha, and that was it. For months and years, no rule. Think about the time. The monks had no rules. They just didn't need it any. They were just, they were that good. Um, so during those days, also, nothing was written down. There was no need. Buddha would teach. While Buddha would teach, the listener get liberated right then and there. The listen. I really want you to think about what it means. How many times you have been to teachings? We have been to teach. I have been so many teachings. From one teacher alone, I have received almost 2,000 initiations from, from one guy, one teacher, one, I'm talking about one. And I have many teachers like that. Nothing happened to me. My own fault, for sure. People like me. When Buddha was at the end of his life, well, we have to say like that. When he was at the end of his life, he gave, um, he, make a, he made a prophecy. He 
talked to Manjushri and these Bodhisattvas saying, right now in lower realms, there are many beings who in future will reborn as human beings and they will they will they will be they will like Mahayana. They will want to follow Mahayana. And I want you, you, this sort of Manjushri, I will look at these great Bodhisattvas, you will then I want you to transmit Mahayana teachings to them. I think people like me must have been like that <laughs> during the time of Buddha when Buddha was on this earth. <laughs> While he was teaching, people would people were getting liberated left and right. And people like me were just somewhere in lower realm, in dark, dirty, just sticky corners. I really believe that. Must be so. So for our sake, someone asks Buddha now, what, what do we do? Then finally he said, write these texts down. Write them on palm leaves and you know. So that's why we have this. So, um, but the tradition of giving oral transmission so Buddha just gave these sutras, and many of these sutras he had he had heard it from his teacher in many of his past lives from 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 past Buddhas. So he was just transmitting it, and then from Buddha, the great Bodhisattvas, or Ananda, and so on all the way to our teacher. Like I said, I have received this from Dongsa Kinsi Rinpoche. Manjushri Dongsa Kinsi Rinpoche. So, um, I really believe that um, and Rinpoche received it from, I think, Dilgo Kinsi Rinpoche and Dujum Rinpoche. So, it's like two teachers mainly. Um, that all this is meaningful, I believe, if I could just read this to you and somehow sort of mm, you get lineage from him. Mm, that's what oral transmission means. Jagar ke par Arya Maitri Prani Arya Maitri Paripricha Nama Mayana Sutra Pilgrim of Chamachu Chesu Vatavaji Mudo Sanga the Jinism of the Lajaka to the Division of Jom Den de Jabu, Kamjanji, Pumbu Chagud, Pumbu Jula Gahun, Ganjum of the Tabjit Chute, Chajisambi Gindin Chambu, and Tabjiko Tene, Chajisamba Sambach of Champa, then the Lant, Lago Tapa Chick to Zani Pumu, you belong a salad to the Jom Den de Kalo, Telus Tamajo, Jom Den de Ladigi Soto, Jom Den de Dilla, Chujin, the number me by Kanga, Tegazi Soba, Jom Den de Chajisamba Sambach of Champa, the Gigi Katsa to Champa. This is really, I don't know how, um, I'm sure the English translation is very nice. It's just the Tibetan, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, I will try to go through this since the sutra is so small. Tangi ningje we sutra jaba chik shenji jula shana chamba sonam jipungo dila sonam jipungo ngama te jai chare nyor mjo tongi chaban cha tongi chaban chawa chewe chaban chawa cha chik ja tongi chaban tangba chaban tangwa ta pena yure mizidu chum den reje dege se kadu devar shik be dege ji songe ten be shen dege ji kasa du kangi kangi chenye jikin kam Teda Rinjin Churbur Kanchete, Garab Simji Jal Jalla Pulva, we can get Sigi Chick Chick Simjin Jin, Rinjin Jimba Shindu Jachin, Ninja Jemmy, Sigi Jimbala, Kangi Chadan, Tanswan, we feel Na Lenny Lenson Sem Semla Kalashi, Jumlin, the Gigi Gats and the Chinese Embassy, Chamba, the Chinese Embassy, Tedap, 
Gelon teda da hadi mi dedim ama yeter. Zerre cebe cidden. Çam ne diyorsun bunu? Numar papa cam bize bir tebaçım da çok soğuz. Dersin sutra. So. Metriha. Future Buddha. You know, it's really like a when children, when we want to tell our children. What is good and what is not good? What is dangerous? Sometimes mm, the best way is to act it out. You just act it out. You know, you touch something and you just like, ah, it's very hot. You act like you're biting something. Ah, it's very hot. That's really all that is. These great bodhisattva mahasattva like maitreya who are about to become completely enlightened buddha ask such a question and then the buddha gives such an answer it's really like okay so imagine if i go or imagine Imagine if Zong Sakin Zerumbuche goes to talk to His Holiness Dalai Lama or such a teacher and asks, mm, you know, just the most simplest of things that you would think, what, what, what is he doing? Like, what are the alphabets of Tibet? <laughs> you know, like, what are the Tibetan alphabets? He's not doing it for himself. Is doing it for the listeners. Here, Maitreya, great Maitreya, goes, you know, um, one day, um, when they, when Maitreya, you know, many, many monks and great Bodhisattva, Mahasattvas, male, female, celestial beings, all together in front of the Buddha on Vulture Peak Mountain, this very important mountain, as you know, where Prajna Paramita teachings were given. He gets up from his seat and like a he has Dharma Rup, so he, you know, it is, it drapes one sort of of his shoulder, which is the left shoulder, right? And he kneels Umuyeb, he's with his right knee on the ground. Lama Salat took this. And you know, he is on the ground in front of the Buddha. And with his hand like this towards the Buddha. And he asked the Buddha, these are really important descriptions. That's why they're mentioned in the sutras. You should also use this in your visualizations. Sutras, um, Mm, yeah, I think it is a great tendril when you visualize like this, when you're reading sutras and you visual, you basically reenact everything in your mind. That, oh, at that time, Maitreya was on, you know, on his right knee on the ground and left knee sort of lift up in his hand like this and all this. This is a really huge tendril. Anyway, so he asked the Buddha then, and what does he ask? He just asked, what is the, what is the ultimate result? What is the fruition, basically, of someone giving Dharma? What is the result also, basically? What karmic result? does one get for teaching dharma? 
or giving dharma to someone. Of course, um, this sutra sort of is disguised in a very sort of <clears throat> Buddha says, um, well, the karmic result is Chamba. Um, so whoever is so basically, what do you think? Someone offers by by filling this whole world. Now we are talking about try kill your cousin. This is okay. It's, this is basically like this: a thousand world like our world, and then thousand of that thousand. And then thousand of that thousand. So that's three three thousand world system. Unimaginable. Now, if someone manages to fill all of that with all the good things, beautiful things, clean, pristine, beneficial, valuable, precious things, and make offering of all that in, in one go not that you offer them slowly no, just all that all in just in one go to, and to whom to the buddhas to just completely enlightened buddhas for a long time he says for a long time that is indeed a great merit Um, during the time of the Buddha, when Buddha was, one day he was just going on begging for food with his begging bowl, as was the case in those days, right? Um, and then there were some children playing and they see that Buddha is begging for food. And they want to offer. So they call the Buddha saying, hey, please come here. So Buddha goes to them. They are playing with sand. So they want to offer sand. And so one boy bends down because Buddha is very tall, right? Very tall, <laughs> supposedly very tall. <laughs> um, one boy bends down and the other one stands on top of this boy offer a handful of sand into his begging bowl. Just sand, not gold, not silver, you know, not, uh, nothing valuable, but they just wanted to do something. And due to that, Buddha makes prophecy, ah, that boy, he is going, you know, after, I think I said something like, 150 years was he is going to be reborn as the great Dharma King Ashoka and he will really spread my teaching in four directions all from the merit of offering handful of sand sand now imagine if you could actually offer anything anything that you value maybe you really value and it doesn't have to be immaterial thing. it could be a human being maybe you're someone who's just who really really loves beautiful men and women like just you just you know He just, you know, yeah. So you offer this whole world filled with these beautiful boys that you are dreaming of. It's just this whole world. 3,000 world system of beautiful boys that if you want. Beautiful. 
I don't know, blonde, blue eyes or Italian, you know, very sensual. So you offer it. Imagine the merit, the merit of that. And but if you, this is what he says, that is a great merit. But if you teach or if you give somehow you you inspire someone you do not have to teach i don't think it means you have to teach i don't think so um, not necessarily <sighs> this is what he says if someone out of compassion now this is important if you teach out of mundane concern that's very different it is yes merit meritorious and all that but if you teach for liberation of the listeners regardless of you yourself liberated or not that's not important at all here my about you just you just don't even think about your liberation or realization who cares it happens it happens the whole focus is about liberation of others and how may i help maybe as a teacher maybe as a student maybe as a friend maybe as an enemy i don't know just i must do something so here he says if someone out of compassion, he says, Sikchi chik shinji jula shanas. He doesn't say teach. He says, if you, he says, if you install one verse into someone else's mind stream, he says, maybe you, ins maybe you inspire them to read a book. You don't necessarily teach. That, that, he says, um the merit the, the amount of merit you just cannot compare you cannot compare we we know how it feels when you cannot compare it's embarrassing you know when you sometimes you know when you I don't know. You go to a birthday party and you buy a fridge magnet as a gift. <laughs> and this is your best friend. And someone is literally starving themselves in order to buy them a gift. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to just <laughs> cannot compare. Similarly here, you cannot compare. Now, why is it so? Is it because it's sacred? Is it because it's special? No. It's just the price of enlightenment. That's it. That is the price of liberation. What is the price of liberation? What? How much does it, how much would it cost? How much are you willing to give? No, really. We should, we should think about that. How much would I be willing to give for liberation? And I'm not talking about things like money. I'm talking about everything. Like, can you, can you give your can you give up your love towards your your country, your children, your parents, your views, political agenda, anything, anything, your dignity? Can you give up your dignity for enlightenment? Can you embarrass yourself to a point of no return for enlightenment? What is it worth? What is liberation worth to us? And here, 
this is not even a your liberation we're not talking even talking about our liberation it's talking about the liberation of others what is it worth to you that is the worth of teaching one verse of dharma now now you think this is not a this is not a you know flowery thing this is not a, um, imagine again i say this again imagine okay buddha we never seen buddha no. right none of us have met buddha fine think about our root guru think about his holiness dalai lama let's say since most of us you know we really truly value his holiness or such a teaching now think that someone is making sure that Mm. all the needs of his holiness is his holiness is met for food to you know, electricity to <laughs> to toilet paper everything is met and not just to for one day two day for just as long as they live mm. and his holiness also seem to like this person. They know each other. They talk to each other. They seem close. That merit. And now think of someone who's never met his holiness. Have devotion for Jesse. It's like just like small village lama. But when they teach one, but this person teaches Dharma with only out of compassion and for the liberation of the listeners and just one verse and this person is poor his holiness doesn't even know this person and this person go to see his holiness probably doesn't even get audience you understand <laughs> but merit Married this person and between the other one who is taking care of all the sort of the physical needs of his own life. Very different. You cannot even compare. This is Buddha saying. He's saying it right here in the Sutra. Of course, it's difficult to believe. It's so difficult to believe. But at the end of the day, what is liberation worth to you? What is the worth of, what is the value of um, liberation of sentient beings? That's it. That's all there is. The value of teaching one verse out of compassion is that. Um, right. Mm. What can be more? Um, what can be more beneficial than? this it takes time of course but once it happens no return you know liberation transformation basically it takes time for sure but everything else in this world takes time everything takes time but once it happens, it doesn't remain. Anything that can happen any moment and rob us of everything that we have achieved in our life. Everything, even your name, you might forget in this very lifetime. 
forget about everything else you know respect and all this just for right now people like something you do tomorrow these same people will be your enemy because they see something you did you do that they don't like nothing can be trusted but this transformation this kind of you know yeah once it happens nothing can destroy it it's really indestructible so that's what we are seeking as bodhisattvas and that's what we want when we talk about these teachings of buddha anyway um i want to also give the oral transmission of the <clears throat> the uh, first sutra that we were uh, talking about um, that we went through that i did not uh, finish that day since it was a very large sutra and entering into the room right uh, i would like to read that Yes, I, I think there is some questions in the chat. I will also look into that. But please um, type, continue typing. What are the other round? No, the first one that I did with uh, entering the womb, I have to finish. No, trust me, this is like three pages remaining. I got it. Oh no, uh, only English, sorry. I leave the Tibetan. You don't have to go. It's quite late. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, but I don't know what. Should I check the Ruchi then? Because there are two of that sutra. One is very large and one is very short. Mm. Okay, I think I got it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Entering, entering the womb, this sutra, I did not finish the oral transmission last time and those of you who are there, I owe you this. Mm. <clears throat> Simbo <laughs> 
ಮೇಂಗೋಮೋದಂತೆ <laughs> ಲಿನೆ <laughs> ಜಿಗೋಜನೆ ಸಿಂಧು ಜಬರ್ ಗಾವದೆ 
Okay, so that was the remaining oral transmission of the first sutra that I really managed to drag myself through now. Hmm. What, is, what are the questions here now? Gosh, you guys have some. Mm -hmm. There is, okay, Hilda. What is the difference between Sutra, Tantra, and Shastra? <clears throat> mm, this is a very big question. And um, basically, um, Sutra uses ordinary perception as the path, on the path, you know, whereas Tantra uses pure perception as the path. 
Sutra is more based upon uh, mental exercise, transformation of the mind, mind training, um, whereas Tantra is more direct um, and can point to our body, can place our body, sometimes even more important than the mind. So, our teachers tell us that sutra is more like thinking about headache. So you actually think about headache. This is a very classical example. When you keep thinking about headache, you might get headache. You actually, you will at some point. But if you just hit your head, no need to think about headache. You will get a headache. Tantra is that, more direct. And I don't want to say a lot, and I also don't know, but there is really um, huge difference between Sutra and Tantra. Now Shastra, now this, this what, is, what are the difference between Sutra, Tantra and Shastra? Shastra means commentary. Commentaries can be both sutra, commentary to sutra teaching or tantra teaching, doesn't matter. <clears throat> then the next question is, Andy asks, what is this? Why are you guys talking about tantra today suddenly? He says, Andy, I have, I have, I also have so many questions concerning how sutras connect to tantra teachings. Many people like myself receive certain initiations, but I think I need to know. <laughs> yes, you need to know much more. We all need to know much more. Uh, knowing is how Buddha Dharma is kept alive, whether it's realization or conceptual knowing. Um, Tantra. So he's asking what if I can say more about the third turning of the wheel of Dharma. Tantra was not really included into the first, second, or third turning of the wheel of Dharma. Tantra is just it just happened. Great Sakchapra master, Chisun Thapa Jalsin, he even says, there is no such thing as first turning of the wheel of Dharma, second or third, or Sutra and Tantra teaching of the Buddha. If you do that, you're insulting the enlightened wisdom, the, the omniscient mind, the omniscient wisdom. Buddha just was there basically he was just there and some people heard him talk about four noble truths some people heard him talk about the minor teaching some people heard tantra teaching mm, yeah so i don't know but anyway this is Yes, in the 84,000, there is a longer version of the question of the Maitreya. Actually, there are three different sutras called questions of Maitreya, but this is the very, very, very short one. Um, okay, Samiksha. Dharma teaching is very complex and very vast, Samiksha says. It contains thousands of sutras. Then what Dharma teaching one can teach to accumulate merit? Any of them, that's the thing. Any Dharma teaching you can that you teach or you inspire someone to learn or practice, you accumulate merit. And here, this is the thing. Uh, 
you might think oh if i give if if i make someone practice vajrayana maybe that's more merit than someone practice sukhi you never know you never know which practice is really potent for whom when this is what his holiness sakti teaching said and it's so true he said profoundness of the teaching depends on the practitioner he said it does not depend on the content itself and this is so very much true mm. so any teaching we give maria christina asks but shouldn't we only teach with our master's permission yes and no Mm, I think to be a, like a, to come out as a Dharma teacher, you should have a master and you should have their permission. Mm, that would be really good, trustworthy at least. But just, you know, you can teach in so many ways, so many ways. Yes. You just do your practice and you are teaching. Someone somewhere is getting inspired. Andy asks again. Andy has a lot of questions today. Um, in our modern times, I really feel sorry for people who don't believe in something after death. What would be a good approach. to really talk to someone about possibility of there being something after death. Mm, I think 90% of the time, even 95% of the time, mm, they are already decided, cannot really do much. These are called, uh, these are very karmic, very karmic, extremely karmic. Mm. Who? So when someone is decided, there is nothing after death. There's really not much you can do. But when someone has decided there is something after death, also there's really nothing much you can do. Best you can do is to appeal their critical mind. Maybe that's not a good word, critical mind. Best you can do is to request them to be honest, sincere in their search. So if you're really honest, don't try to prove there is life after death. The moment you do, you have lost. You really have already lost. You don't know it, but you've all kind of lost. Because that's not your burden. You don't have to prove it. Just have to ask the person, are you honest? If you are honest, you should also ask, why shouldn't there be life after death? 50 50. I've said this many times and I'm saying this again. Really? This is so important. The person has to decide themselves. How are you going to force someone to believe in anything? We cannot do it anyway, right? But if they would open their mind and if they would realize, because most of the time, these kind of people, they, they, 
it's like as if we are trying to convince them that there's life of the dead. And so they're very defensive and they ask, why is there life of the dead? This is a very difficult battle. It's uphill, no need. They themselves ask them to be honest. And if they are honest, they should ask, why should there be life of the dead? And then why shouldn't there be life of the dead? Work is already almost done. Because when they then look, now you will not find there is no sort of proof, scientific proof that there is life of the dead or there isn't life of the dead. There's no such a thing. His Holiness Dalai Lama was saying this a few years ago. It was so sweet because he's being honest. Because, you know, we Buddhists, we believe because Dharma Kirti, the great Indian logician, Buddhist logician, who met Manjushri, who was taught by Manjushri, and he wrote Pramana Vartika, where he starts by asking, is Buddha a trustworthy person too? Then it goes on and on, and he tackles the issue about life after death, the possibility of it. But that was an easy battle, I think, much easier than what we have now, because he was talking with non-Buddhists who also believe in the existence of a mind. The moment that happens is easy. Existence of a mind other than the body, that is easy. But this, so he's always this is what he said that I don't find, I cannot prove it to anybody. If you find, tell me. He, he tells us to all the listeners, you know, monks at that time. So, and, and then, yeah, I don't think it is our wish. This is really not the proper way of going. If the person themselves honestly look, they are bound to find more reason or more likelihood that maybe there is a life of the dead than possibility that there is no life of the dead. The only sort of the pos reasoning, if you want to call it, that there is no life of death is we don't see it. But that, you don't have to say, oh, just because you see it doesn't mean they themselves will know. Yes. But yeah, no, now, the, Andy asked what to talk to his old people like his father. That's difficult now. Very different. I don't know what you should do. I don't know. Maybe put a Buddha statue in front of them and put blessed pills in their coffee. I don't know. Um, I think that's all the question there is. Gosh. If you have questions, please raise now, um, or else, yes, please thank the translators, please thank Rebecca, who worked so hard, Carol, who worked so hard, and all the translators, you know, all those you helped. Um, you are helping by just being here, and listening to Dharma. Um, yeah, okay, someone is squeezing there, what is it, Rinpoche, can you talk about, where is it, Carolina, Dharani, oh, Dharani, kind of, it's like a mantra, Dharani, basically blessed words, these are just blessed words. Um, when you reach, I think when you reach 8th Bhumi or 10th Bhumi, some very high Bodhisattva level, you have the ability to bless your words, bless your what you say, you have the ability to bless that. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah. And then someone else recited, it has the capacity to transform their mind. These are now all. These are now, we are talking about now, very enlightened activity. When, yeah, when people saw Shakyamuni, they just become very calm. Some of them just gain wisdom by seeing his face, his face. He didn't say one word. This is a really sort of high enlightened activity we are talking about that doesn't rely necessarily on a communication that we understand. So it's a dharani, 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 this mantra, what is this mantra? If you don't understand or if you don't believe, it's so stupid. You just keep reciting the same word, same word again and again and again, and that's supposed to liberate you. And then if you did, then if you do not get it, you, one is sound, one is mind. They never meet. How is supposed to liberate the mind? How is one supposed to liberate the other? Yeah. So then here devotion and these things really play a big role. And, and this is how it is. You have to trust people. Every time you call a taxi guard, you have to trust that they're not going to murder you. You just have to sit and just go, right? Every time you go to a restaurant, anytime, you can just put anything in your food, your food that you put in your mouth. You just have to trust and we trust. That's devotion, you just trust. All right, okay, now maybe this is like the last question, the last two questions and that's it. Yota poison, okay. Mood switches, yeah. Impermanence, you should look at it and you should understand that you cannot trust your mind. One thing, the only thing that you know, the only thing that you know is our mind. There's really nothing else in this world that we can know. The only thing that we can really truly know is this mind. Even the things that you see, scientifically now we are told, there is no such thing as color outside, right? It's formed in the eyes, but there is color <laughs> here, there, outside, we think. Nothing can be trusted except our mind, and even that is not trustworthy, you cannot trust it. Henrik, could you talk a bit about how to strengthen one's confidence in one's own basic goodness, Buddha nature? This requires a lot of merit, I think. It really does. Um, and you have to, you have to yearn for it. I think you have to first maybe also try to understand it intellectually. Intellectually too. Maybe try to understand that. Sometimes I wonder, what are these people thinking when they're talking about Buddha Nature? Like, what are they thinking? I think most people are thinking about emptiness. Or they have a vague idea of inseparability of clarity and emptiness, this kind of like vague phrase. Be consumed by this idea if you really want it. I want to know, I want to know, read, listen, ask, think, pray, contemplate, wish, aspire. Uh, yeah. 
and I think you, your confidence will grow by itself. It has to grow yeah, naturally. Mm. Okay, now I do not know. Uh, suggested reading material regarding Buddha nature. Mm, if you want to be inspired, read, I think, some these um, Chan uh, stories, Zen stories too, especially the ones from Japan and China, what happened there with this master. But explanation wise, they're really not good, I feel. Then you really need to read um, Maitreya's text. Um, like um, Mahana Sutta Alankara and their commentary by so many teachers. Yeah. For me, at least, I really don't know. I'm sure there are many great Zen. Um, manuals and in, in instruction but i yeah i feel like their stories are very inspiring but when it comes to explaining things indians and the tibetans may be quite good at it anyway so i will stop here thank you so much again um let me let me see who is still there so late All right. Madhya's mm. text, yes, it's called uh, Mahayana Sutra Alankara. Sorry, sorry. Um, Uttara Tantra. Yeah, Uttara Tantra. Mm. That one talks a lot about Buddha nature. Mm. So please de dedicate the merit uh, towards um, liberation of sentient beings that um, Dharma, Dharma holder, live long. Um, that all beings come to their sense and understand and value um, the path of Shakyamuni and that you yourself can um, <clears throat> hold the dharma practice the dharma and one way or another become um, a necessary tool an important tool in spread of the dharma um, and especially pray for the longevity of our teachers um, it really seems like end of dharma right now it really feels like that uh, you know according to the mahayana calculations it's been more than four thousand years since buddha passed away so it looks to end yeah this 2500 year thing we don't believe actually Tibetans. Mm. And it really looks like that. Buddha said Dharma will remain for 4,500 years. And I think we are already in 4,200 years and 300 years, according to Atisha calculation and Satya Master is true. Um, yet, if you aspire, you can, you can make it so like that the Dharma is once again revived. It happened, it happened in the past. 
Once there was a prince. He was born during a time when the Buddha of his world has passed away a long time ago. And the only thing that remained of this Buddha was his, uh, I think a statue or a painting. And there was some writing on a, on a rock that nobody understands. What does it mean? No one understands. Dharma was really, really at the end. We are not even there yet. His time was so bad that there were monks, but they didn't know what they were supposed to do. They just kind of, maybe they knew, okay, maybe not kill, not lie, not sexual misconduct, but that's about, nobody really knew. So he becomes monk, actually, he becomes monk. And then he finds out no one knows anything. And then he looks at the rock. No one understands that. He, everybody kind of knows that this was written by one of the main students of the Buddha. He wrote it with his finger on a rock. Big rock. No one understands what it means. You know what this prince did? Who's now a monk? He just sit and think about the Buddha. Doesn't know anything. Just the name and the picture. But he kept thinking about this and calling it, calling the Buddha. Every day. He, so he entered into this meditation every day, again and again and again, thinking about Buddha. And slowly, slowly, the writing on the rock started making sense to him. He began to understand. Oh, that's what it means. Slowly, slowly, the, <clears throat> the monk who wrote it, who was long dead, long dead, appeared in front of him and said, this is what I wrote. I actually wrote this for you. That I knew, the Buddha said, after everything is finished, there will be a Bodhisattva who will revive everything. So for this person to aid this, I wrote this. So he was very inspired and he meditated again. And then the Buddha himself appeared. And for a very short period, but it was again like a big burst of Dharma. All thanks to this prince who just was so, yes, aspire, make aspire, as aspiration. Don't think in love and, you know, don't be trapped by yourself. You understand? Maybe in this life you're very shy and, you know, not so, but then maybe in next life you're very outgoing, you're very attractive and you, you never know. Don't be trapped by this kind of temporary appearance of yourself. It's just changed 100%, you never know. So make aspiration in this life or the next life. May I hold that? Like that. Uh, yes, we really need that. We really need people doing this. You understand? Yeah. Okay. So, so nam di thamji zibani thamni ne beda nam thamji be chega na jibalon chuba. Isi bhi chalon do do show do ekdo nam me chibu dewa thamji jong tembal ne da kurdi da chede yori ne yori chhi do jar kawo jar kawo shen trangit ne banam chering ne uzun do tada dewa tembal. Changju simjo rumbo jima jipa nam cheba da cheba ne ba me ba ya kong ne kong do pelvar show jambal pa jidar chamba na kundu sambu te an thejindi. Teda kunji jesu talop chir ngewa deda tambya rato no no. May I in all my lives carry far the weight of Buddha Dharma. And if I am not capable to do so, may I always be worried 
about the longevity of Dhamma. Right, so take care of yourselves. Mm. You did good, celebrate. I don't know, drink nice tea, you go for a nice walk, call your friends, just practice. This is good, this is really worth celebrating. Yeah. That's all.